Hi, hello, and welcome to the Oracle Counselorship brought to you by Vertex of Abundance. My name is Serene Priestess of Lusty. I'll be your Oracle today. Um, I was sent to deliberate some findings. I'm getting direct opposition energy and um, the rest that I know about that is that there's just a lot of changes going on right now. A lot of changes are being kind of pushed through aggressively, or kind of some harsher changes maybe. So we're needing to grow stronger. Strength, courage, wisdom, emotional fortitude. That's one thing I know. Um, there's a lot of things coming out into the physical. They've been going on for some time. Though. So there have been spiritual occurrences, spiritual seeds planted that are manifesting physically. or that are finally terminating into the physical. But the groundwork has been laid, meaning the intentions have already happened, the causes have already been made spiritually for these physical manifestations. So definitely we're wrapping up a cycle that's gonna give some kind of physical fruit. Um, I was also getting that we were had been sitting on, we had been hosting, we had been matriculating, meaning going through, cycling through, also maturing our our spiritual gifts. We all, different types of people were learning about the the subtle aspects of themselves. We call that going in. Indigenous practitioners call that going in, which is basically intuition, intellect, instinct, identity. Um, insight, it, reflection, meditation is going inward a lot. Typically, it's it's when the intuition has its own personality, own spirit, own initiation. It begins to talk to to us, or we begin to have a practice that includes incorporates that. So um, we were going in. Now we're going to have that what we were doing when we were inside, reflecting inwardly permit, um, especially gaining that wisdom from journeys within the self. It's going to start to bear fruit. It's going to start to yield. So one thing, the queen of pentacles is the golden goose. The king of pentacles is like the farmer or the one that's yielding. Um, the ace of pentacles is that golden egg. So we have like that farmer energy right now. That, that millionaire maker, key maker, the mint maker energy. We're going on this journey. We're going on this cycle to manifest and master our grind, whatever our duties and obligations are, whatever that that fizzle, that hustle, that grind, that flow. It might be for cash money dollar bills. It could also be that we're finally falling into formation that we're finally being where we're supposed to be as it was intended by the divine. According to the agreement we made with creation. As we go out there into the world, we're gonna recognize that there's achievements, things that we've been spending our time, energy, effort, attention on that have solidified, they've crystallized, they've culminated We've cycled through, completed that cycle. As we go on and continue on and carry on, we might be taking things with us that we've already completed, that we've already achieved, that we've already accomplished. We might realize places and spaces that we've been spending our time, energy, effort, and attention. We're no longer a novice. We're no longer an initiate. We're no longer even an adept. We are a master. In, in, more, than one, in more than one or two or three ways, I, I feel like there's, a half dozen things that we've mastered without knowing that have been mastered subtly or intuitively or in inwardly, uncon unconsciously, you know, covertly, micro-wise, th things have been going on on the micro. And they're going to step to the forefront now 
out of the background, out of the subconscious. They're going to become macro. They're going to become active. They're going to become overt. And they will mostly be soft skills, mainly intuition or, or, or subtle skills of decoding the mystery of creation. Okay, so really our, our priestess, our inner priestess is activating is, is what that means. And that's what this is. We're going on the journey as we go out and deal with others. We're going to notice that um, we, we, we've achieved something. We're complete. We've accomplished completion. Other people need hope, wish, and prayer. They need us to give uh, them some kind of celestial ascent. We need them to be clear on what their needs are and intentions so we can move on, move forward. And we're already putting our soul on the line, engaging with the external world as it is. We want to be part of spiritual spiritual society, um, intelligentsia even. We, we do know not all of the Illuminati is a dark cabal. A lot of us have just awakened and healed in some kind of sense where now we're called to serve humanity. So that's what I, I'm seeing and we're gonna talk about this a little bit. I'm always curious what's going on when we have the eight of pentacles with the king of pentacles, especially with the sun here. Somebody may have the sun in Virgo is what I'm getting. Yeah, so what of the sun in Virgo here? Okay, so this is the Sphinx. Virgo meeting the lion is the Sphinx. Yeah, so we have the Sphinx and Tahuti here. Um, we that energy, Virgo, and Leo, is going to anchor. Oh, we do have the Hermit and the King of. So, so we have a, a Virgo Sun here. We also have a Virgo, Venus and Virgo. We have Sun and Leo, Sun and Virgo, Sun and Sad, Sun and Gemini, Sun and Aquarius. There's also a Pisces rising here. Somebody could be moon in Pisces. Do so we have a Virgo sun, Pisces moon? This Virgo sun is probably a Pisces rising, which would mean your moon will be in the first house, your sun in your seventh house. Venus in the first house, I mean, Venus in the seventh, sun in the seventh, moon in the first. Okay. Venus opposed moon is interesting. We also have a Gemini rising here or Mars in Gemini. This person has Jupiter on the first. So there's a Gemini rising here with Jupiter, Gemini. Those last two, the Gemini rising, what is the message? Again, be careful. People are going to come around with hidden agenda, material motives. They want to cloak themselves and our energy because we're, we're being energetically targeted because of hater ass hoes. What's the message to the Gemini rising? What was the message to that? Okay, this card keeps coming back. It came back for Gemini and. Okay, so we're chosen. We're not supposed to fit in right now because we're chosen. People who don't get us the vision because we're not being seen, it's because the language is more better than everybody. It's just that our utility isn't clear. When people start to recognize this and do more than tolerate us, actually celebrate us, it means that's where we can hold space. That's where we can be seated on the throne. 
actually we need to move out of a lot of places and spaces and people. We have a three, four, five. It's not in the ascending, descending order, but three, four, and five. So it's we're going to spin through a lot of people right now. We need to be fine with that. The other message, especially for the Gemini rising, is uh, that uh, just later, because that was, okay, so there may also be a meeting of twins because somebody was a Pisces and then the masculine is going to be more of the Gemini energy. It's not going to be the, the message for everybody. The When you see the Empress, somebody's getting crowned, but she represents the throne. When you see the Emperor, somebody's getting some role, some kind of position to fill um, because he already has a crown. So um, that we just got that. Somebody is getting enshrined somewhere. We're ascending to a, a role of position. And then the emperor came right back. So that was the truth. There's somebody out there trying to block it. Um, and it's through magic, the moon card. This is a binding spell. And it's because we're chosen. Somebody wants to harvest energy from a chosen one, so they're using a binding spell. Now, spells are from magic, and it's not always actual witchcraft, but it does mean, you know, turning an idea into manifestation. And that could be through, you know, gang stalking or, or collective ritual, too. So, you know, there's lots of things that are 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 the craft, witchcraft is what I, I referred to. It's not always a conscious, intentional thing where someone's projecting their energy or doing, you know, rukuku, bruhaha, abracadabra, hocus pocus. It could be just some gossip at the water cooler. That's actually a coven, people don't realize. Okay, so not all of us are aware of the darkness we're on but we still have to pay for it a lot of a lot more of us are guilty than one would think it's not always an intentional or obvious thing it's not for us to judge this is all under the nine of swords here also something is backfiring it didn't work this is eight of swords this is a nine of swords so something's been caught up it's because we have purgatory and then we have paradise here it's, it's, it's Paradise, we're anchored in paradise. I'm with the sun here at the bottom of the reading. So like I said, we're going towards our hustle, our grind, our flow, our thug fizzle, or whatever, or what have you, because we have some kind of achievement here. That's the world card. And we're anchored in regulation, rules, restrictions. So we had to fall in line, get with the program, and it happened. We mastered something from that. But as a result, some of the sacrifice to make here, which will be perpetual as we're going through this initiation, is letting go. It's in the second house. So it may be some, I'll be honest, it may be, it's values. We're holding on to people. This is the things we don't need to. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, because now we're out of this steel or boundary or border or restriction that we were under. Um, now we're out of this restriction that we were under. But we need to know who the players are, magician. We need to, the restriction's been lifted, I feel, eight of swords, but we need to know who the players are. Because again, the, the guidance here is to, to watch the people, places, and things. There's hidden agendas, um, hidden enemies, ulterior motives, hidden agendas. And with the five of pentacles and this moon, I, I'm not good. And these people will seize upon us, knight of swords. These are, they will exploit if they have something to exploit. To a lesser degree, not so much if they're Gemini rising, Mars and Gemini, but, um, If they have a Mars in an air sign or they are Gemini rising, I wouldn't be worried. But it is cautioning here. Like, hey, some of the, the reason why we were ruled over and regulated and restricted, ultimately we would have looked like in the physical as um, reined in and wrangled up by God. 
that's how it would have looked. Our life got put on hold in some kind of way. It, ish got back burner. We were held in the in the little galactic waiting line queue, like the DMV line at or at the bank or something. For a minute, it might have been five, seven years. Okay, part of the lesson was we need to watch who we're around. We're not gonna be blessed if everything around us is messy or if the people around us are dark, busted and disgusted. Okay, so um, that's what's up because the other the other side of this is some kind of blessing. It could be the blessing of a of a gift, some kind of heart's desire, ace of cups. It can be a blessing of love. It can be um, a new spiritual gift. You know, some some someone here is touch starved, and that 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 prayer is going to be answered as well. But the the agreement, the cost of this is discernment or about people, places, and things. Gifts will not be granted of that nature without knowing and knowing how to check the vibe, the energy, the frequency of the people that we're holding space with. Not just intimately, but even like neighbors and coworkers. We're going to have to make the sacrifices we need to make to get into that sanctuary, refuge, which is safe space. There is a Mercury in Sagittarius here. We also have a Libra rising. But for sure, for sure, Mercury Sagittarius, we have the Magician, the Temperance card, and the Eight of Wands. So this Mercury and Sagittarius is saying like, hey, um, we need to get to higher ground. We might even need to withdraw, move on, move forward because we're being guided to walk away, move away. And it did take a while to get that message. Um, Page of Swords is a delayed message. Now, also, it can be that we're feeling clear or we're feeling passage or we're feeling over something or we're feeling like we've moved on or we can be preparing for um, a short trip under 400 kilometers. And again, this is about that spiritual gift I was saying about. Now, one thing to understand is that environments around in location, there may be some kind of projection. I feel like it's a, a chaos or a binding spell, a stripping spell. Again, harvesting our energy is what I'm getting. Somebody wants to move into our space. They want to utilize what our energy, what our energetic signature can manifest. They want to manifest how we're supposed to manifest. I also feel like they think we're unaware of our powers of manifestation. Okay, but I never trust a, a hoe who's trying to count another person's blessings. That's a dangerous kind of person to be around. That's pre Jezebel energy. And we keep getting this five of pentacles, which is not, it's not good. So um, I'm just going to put that out there and move on. So I do want to say we were also waiting for people to move into some kind of alignment. We were around some wonky people, I feel. Something's finally over, though, and it was whatever stronghold the enemy had, which was just kind of the collective ignorance on our part. It was a, a, make, a, a vulnerability was consistently exploited, and that that hole's been plugged up. It's wreaked as much havoc as it's going to. It's no longer a zero day exploit. A manipulation, a scandal of falsity. <clears throat> A betrayal of that type will never happen again. Of course, we're still gullible in other ways, but of that of that kind, oh no, not to gain, not to gain. Of this, we can assure ourselves. And really, what what it was, what they're calling it, is trespassers are no longer allowed here. We don't have squatters anymore. The people we associate with now earn their keep. They have utility. 
whether they're providing refuge, sanctuary, safe space, ultimately. We're not going to be a highway for demons. We're not going to be musty, dusty, crusty, busted up and disgusted. We're not going to have no trifling, treacherous, treasonous people around us, these sideways, sneaky, seditious hoes. We're done with that. Also, there are some hidden enemies that are going to be purged. Either they're going to be exposed or they're, they're going to be repelled away. Especially those who try to knock us down a peg or two. We're actually more indestructible than other people intended us to be. It's just that our genius is hidden. It makes us look stupid to people who would normally target. So it's fine that we look like a mark. Cause that's a that's an indication to us that they don't respect us authentically. The thing about it is we're there to heal the group that we're in. There's some kind of dominion principality here, um, which also means that we are uh, someone. It's staying a woman of great spiritual power, but it doesn't. We might not be female body. Everybody watching. So in that sense. It, it's more of a nurturing, and it's also always more more of a Vishnu energy than a Shiva, meaning we we're not on the front line doing that soldier type of work. It's more um, aftercare, nurturing, supporting people coming off the journey. You know, those who are are willing and waiting, those who are awakened to it. We don't have to sit there and do the actual awakening it's but we are going to spin through a lot of unawakened people and of course since we're on that nurturing energy because the same woman of great spiritual power so we're going to want to love on everybody even if they're disrespecting us to our face and part of it is if somebody was able to get to the place in their mind heart body soul I don't know what kind of crack they were smoking, but if they were able to get to the place where they could disrespect us, if they could be allowed by the Lord to mistake us, to misuse us, to misjudge us, to misperceive us, if they were able to get tripping like that, they were already entitled to go. They were already cleared to go. Those who are clearly assigned and not simply attached, but clearly assigned, they will have longevity. They will have staying power, enduring power. And it won't be a consistent drama trauma with them i won't be this perpetual chaos devil card see when god gives us a blessing there won't be chaos karma or confusion god don't bless no mess and in in the game of love yeah it is love and war but the other part about that is that um if, if in, in love especially if it's not an overwhelming yes then it's an absolute no that one thing of the unhealed people that try to change their person or, or they'll say, I know, but, oh, it's because, no. You're not getting what you want, period. And if it's not getting better today, how would, how do we know it's going to get better after marriage? After union? Because we have the Seven of Swords with the Temperance card. That's a shapeshifter. These people can... We need to have the discernment of we're not getting what we want. The way it looks now, the, the impression we're left with now, that's how it is. That's how it's going to be. Because these people can shift around. So we've got to check the vibe because they're going to make it look as pretty as we tell them our standards and boundaries are. They're going to try to fit the mold instead of allowing themselves to be attracted or repelled. These are people who are going to try to hang on. And it's a type of spell. It's a, it's a certain type of thing that the unhealed fall prey to. But this is over. Um, toxic relationships, we don't have to deal with that anymore. We're moving on, moving forward from that. Now, somebody here,
is an Aries rising. We will also overcome some type of shadow thing. We have the expense card and the devil. Somebody here is a Cancer Moon. We have the Four of Cups and the Queen of Cups. That's the Cancer Moon. Or the Queen of Cups here is domicile, which means there's been a long-term plan to overtake a soul. It did not happen. And whatever curse or spell is being broken, ten of swords, something, a spell is lifting, a curse is being broken. Also, somebody has their son in Gemini here. We have the sun card, the lover's card, and the ten of swords. Somebody has their son in Gemini. Again, we're getting Venus and Virgo. So this whole reading is going to be about a Gemini sun. Gemini writing. And it doesn't, you don't have to be that energy, please. Again, you do not have to be that energy, but it might involve somebody with that energy. It might be about something that was happening in Gemini season that was um, late May, early Ju June, early June, late May. Now, the next part of that, because the Gemini moon is going to be November, December. Which is only three months away. So there's something going on with Gemini energy here. Because we were stuck in, in we were stuck in some kind of way. And now we're free. What I'm getting is that the darkness, the enemy kept having a tie to us, and it was because we were so attached to people that we love. And love is unconditional. They don't have to change in order for us to love them, but we need to not tolerate things. The strategy we were implementing was a little too weak. We had to switch it up. We have to purge some energy. So somebody here is in Aries rising, also has their Venus in Aries. And it's true. Um, again, we need to repel some of the grosser energy. That means the universe wants us at a higher vibe. We're operating at a low frequency. We need to get to a high vibration, period, point blank, end of story. Um, it's because there's energies around us that are trying to keep us at a low vibration, meaning they're, they're conflicting with us in some kind of way. We might have the vibratory ears. We might have a lot of that forgetting the keys and forgetting the wallet then forgetting that last item on the grocery list or leaving our lunch at home while we're at work or, you know, um, losing things for a couple of days, things of that nature. That that's one way of spiritual attack. We might be getting sleepy a lot or feel tired and drained. That's another version of spiritual attack. There's little different ways we're getting. We're under attack. It's because there's low vibrational people around us with their eyes on us. There's also low vibrational spirits trying to interact with us. We need to be at a higher vibration and prioritize a higher vibration so that certain experiences can anchor into the physical. Spirit's trying to get us to return home and it's to a higher vibration. Um, that's really what we need to do to drive forward according to our drive desires, passions, motivations with an expansive life. We need to um, achieve this discernment. This is what the universe has been waiting on us uh, for cups.
page of cups. That's also why we've been feeling bored. It's because we know we're worth better, but the evil eye is on us pretty hard. Nine of Wands. Um, and this is the awakening we've been waiting for. Somebody here has been waiting to hear this. We finally have them out because I've been getting this energy. We finally have Mars and Gemini. Somebody here is definitely a Gemini rising. We also have right now Cancer Sun. Um, we need to get our bubble burst if we're Cancer Sun. Um, the the situation is as such. We're being a little bit milk toast, a little bit of a baby in some way. I don't understand what that is. I understand strong attachments as a cancer, um, but there's some truth we're refusing to recognize, which is making the situation twice as hard. We need to accept some kind of defeat, and it might be that we, we put the wrong trust in somebody. Um, yeah, because we were with a toxic, we were in a toxic situation. And we actually want, it might not feel like it. Some decisions that we make are not going to feel good after we make them, but they're still the right decision. Sometimes we lose someone, but we gain ourselves. Yeah, because the, the, the worst thing is being in a, an, an attachment to somebody, but also feeling alone. That means we're in hell. We're dealing with somebody that's fallen. They're not fulfilling their divine duty. They're choosing to live like the fallen and not the saved. They're, they're not seeking redemption in any way. They're fine in, in their suffering, which means it hasn't gotten bad enough yet. Because we're the, the path that we're going on is towards unawakened, unhealed people, seven of cups. And we have all this love to give them, but they need to ask for love, two of cups, not just look like a needy person because it's really swamp people. Uh, it's really five of pentacles. We're in a situation here where we have to let people go. That's been the whole cycle. Five of pentacles, will of fortune. If we feed them, it will, if we feed it, it will eat us. They need to say, hey, I'm looking for a handout, can you help me? Versus just laying there with the, you know, they need to be proactive and, and, and they need to be looking to help themselves if we're to help them as well. We can't be an enabler. We need to shift around our associations and because it's affecting all our self-belief as well. It's realigning our view on the universe. And we're the creator. We are the futuristic being. We need to be setting the pace, not getting the, the set pace by people of a low vibration. It's not exactly that we're hanging around losers, but we're going more on that side of the spectrum than the winner. And it's because of influence from external. It's fine if we hang around people that are needy, but we, we can't let that drag us down. Yeah, so we're trying to serve people that are in, in purgatory, what this is telling me. And we need to be aware of that or we're not gonna have the proper hygiene to deal with these types of people. We shouldn't be in those places and spaces trying to get our needs met. We actually need to have our defenses up and realize that we're trying to engage intimately with the help or we're trying to engage intimately with the client thing. So we're trying to engage intimately with somebody who's not on our level or they're not trying to be on our level. Because it says on the other side, opposed to us, we're, it, we're, they're just looking for a fool. They're looking for a new mark. They're looking for somebody, the fool, 
gullible enough to say yes. And that's been the thing that's the hardest to realize. Tower and the five of pentacles. That's why I had to get so bad. Because we were very short sighted in how we navigated the situation and engaging with the other person or the other side. It might not be just a person. What it's talking about is some type of collective enmity. Us as chosen, us as light workers, us as seers, we us as priestesses, we get attacked a little bit more easy because we trigger the darkness in people and it usually acts out as some type of projection, typically gossip. Here it's talking about being attacked by a group, like a community. Somebody has their moon in Taurus or Virgo to a lesser degree. Somebody has their Mercury in Taurus with the Five of Pentacles higher fan. We have a Virgo moon, a Taurus moon to a lesser degree. That could be an Aquarius rising a Gemini rising. We have a Venus in Sagittarius, again, Gemini rising. Venus in the seventh house gets attacked a lot. It's one of those magnetic attraction points, so there's jealousy. It's a lot of love, hate, five of swords energy is what I'm getting. Evil eye. Yeah, evil eye. And it's because of jealousy, Empress. We're dealing with haters. Venus in the seventh house, remember I was talking about that? It, it doesn't just make us very beautiful, but we seem beautiful to other people. We attract beauty around us. It's been a long, persistent problem. It's dull people trying to contest. They can't even compare, but they're going to try to compete. Okay. Yeah, it's warfare and attack. So we weren't allowed to expand. There was some type of restriction placed by the universe because it wasn't, we weren't waking up. That's what this whole thing. So finally, though, it's happened. But if you notice, it's only happened within our own lives. We've only been able to do our own thing. We've only been able to find our own little hustle, our own little grind. We haven't been able to get that job. We haven't been able to get that man. We haven't been able to join that group. We haven't been able to join that little thing. We wanted to. We've tried even. We might have even circled the block a couple times, but it hasn't clicked. It hasn't solidified. The things we're doing by ourselves, to ourselves, about ourselves, that's working. We're wanting a little bit more. We've been trying to get a little bit more in all these different kinds of ways. It's because the universe wanted us focused on ourselves for a minute. And we were in the God's crosshairs. We weren't acting right when we were told in some kind of way, we might've been ignoring our intuition for a minute as well. But we finally got something. We've reached some type of spiritual perfection. We're gonna start getting blessed, but also there's a sorceress here. One person in this little clip talking smack. The leader of this gang stalking, the leader of this
um, when we get a little bold and feisty is when we're entering into a new cycle. Somebody has their Venus and Sagittarius. I think we said that already, but it came back. It came out again. Yeah, so the I'm going to say it just like this. God is waiting until we get a little feisty because that's the energy he needs to work with us next. We need to be a little bit of a spitfire. Six of cups, that, that's the space we need to be in. Because um, we need to both be some basic people. We're going to leave everybody out there to their own devices, their own magic, their own manifestations, their own whatever. We're not going to be fueling, co-signing. We're not going to be engaging. We're not going to be any of that. They can't even harvest our energy anymore. And if they have our name and the, if they're still spitting our name in their mouth when we haven't been around for months and months, you know, it's another problem. It's not us. It's their own problem. We've been away for a while. We're making a return, but it's because we recognize that we don't need to care as much about these other people as we once did, they don't matter. It's all about us. And that's what it means by a little feisty, a little bold. Because we don't need to stay blocked anymore. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve. Thank you for allowing the privilege to do so. Take good care.